What does freedom mean to you? Does it mean the freedom to choose? The freedom to have a family and raise your kids according to your own values? What about living a wild, adventurous life, experimenting with music, relationships, or art? What does freedom really mean? What if freedom meant something that only a few Americans still understood? What if it meant that your choices and your values were set by you, rather than by some politician in a far-off capital? Some people think we're only free to choose to live exactly how they live, by their moral code, or their narrow worldviews. But if liberty means anything, it means that you, and you alone, have the power to exercise your rights to which the laws of nature and nature's God granted you. It's time to put these principles back into action. It's time to restore the American dream, activate in our communities, and take our country back. It's time to wake up America. It's time to rise in freedom. Good morning. I'm Austin Peterson. Thank you so very much for watching the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. We are streaming live across multiple platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and of course at wakeupamericashow.com. We're so glad to have you here for the second program in our Monday through Friday morning talk show starring me, Austin Peterson. We've got a lot of great guests for you today and of course a lot of awesome topics. Our first guest coming up here in just a moment is my good buddy. Buddy, Tony Lavasco, State Representative Tony Lavasco from the state of Missouri will be joining us to talk about a potential tax cut here in the state of Missouri. After that, we'll have one of our favorite guests, Edie Vogel, who's joining us in studio to discuss Jennifer Lawrence having dreams about Tucker Carlson. Well, she says they're nightmares, but I mean, it's a little weird, don't you think? We'll talk about that with Edie and much more. And of course, Judge Andrew Politano joining us this morning at 8 a.m. to talk about the right to be left alone. Well, but joining us right now here on the phone, we will have in just a moment, Mr. Tony Lavasco. Uh, good morning, Tony. Can you hear us okay? Good morning, Austin. Good morning. We're glad to have you here, Tony. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Um, glad to have uh, such an esteemed and honored guest as yourself. Oh, that's not good. You're starting off the show lying. That's not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, appreciate you have, having you here, my friend. Um, and uh, welcome to the brand new uh, Wake Up America show. Glad to have your... Um, your uh, presence here. So I, I guess my first question for you here is, Tony, because we're out of session right now here in the state of Missouri, uh, but you're supposed to get called in. The governor has called you in for what we call a special session here in our state. And the proposal is that you're supposed to give us all a tax cut. But I'm hearing rumors that there's a little bit of chicanery going on behind the scenes. Do you want to fill us in? Yeah, so yeah. here's the problem. Uh, there is a tax cut that the governor proposed, uh, a halfway decent one, actually. Uh, it, it would lower the income tax uh, by about 10%, uh, give or take. However, uh, what is often not mentioned in marketing material from the governor's office is that that tax cut is actually already in law. Uh, so we've passed uh, over the last several years uh, various trigger mechanisms that if Missouri's economic activity hits certain benchmarks, uh, which it is expected to, uh, there will be an automatic uh, tax cut stepping us down uh, that 10 percent over the next, depending on uh, how, you know, how you look at it, uh, probably between four to seven years. Uh, we'll have that, that, that tax cut fully in effect. Uh, this proposal from the governor would bring us that entire tax cut right now, which, okay, that's pretty fantastic. I, I would be excited about that. However, there's not a lot in the way of new tax cuts that's being proposed. Uh, he does suggest uh, eliminating the bottom income tax bracket, which sounds good, except for it's an incredibly tiny bracket. It doesn't actually affect that many people. Uh, he wants to bump the standard deduction up by a small amount. Again, nice, mostly symbolic. The issue here isn't that that proposal is bad. It, it's not. I, it's a good proposal. The, the issue is he is wanting to bundle this tax cut uh, with a six-year extension of a large agricultural tax credit program uh, that is currently in force, uh, which is nothing more than the standard, you know, corporatist uh, attempt at uh, providing special tax uh, treatments to certain industries. Uh, it's a terrible idea. I don't like that concept. 
and the governor has thus far refused to split the votes out into two separate uh, measures so that they can be considered separately. Right. So this is basically they really want the subsidies for the agricultural um, for the agricultural companies, but they're trying to basically give you guys cover so that you can go back to your constituents and say, "Oh, well, I voted for a tax cut." Exactly right. And you know, I understand that as a as a you know tactic. Uh, the issue there is it's just, you know, the carrot just isn't that great. Uh, you know, if that was the motive, uh, ultimately, we would need to see something that would be a substantial tax cut beyond what we would get anyway if we're patient, uh, I think, in order for that to be even remotely appealing. But is it really, I mean, Tony, is it really a tax cut if they're going to increase spending? Because spending is really just a tax increase, ultimately, right? Well, I mean, you can certainly look at it that way to a certain extent. Uh, now, Missouri does have a requirement to balance our budget. So realistically speaking, a, a tax cut now rather than a phased in one would provide at least some kind of mechanism to, to make sure that it, it, you know, restricts our spending over the next five or seven years, which, again, I, I favor that. Uh, whether it's something that would be, you know, worth that offset for those uh, those agricultural the, the tax cut or credits, I, I don't think so. Tony, is taxation the price that we pay to live in a civilized society? Well, it's certainly a price we pay. I'm not so sure that we're in a civilized society, unfortunately. So. <laughs> if you're uh, just tuning in, we're speaking to State Representative Tony Lavasco. Uh, Tony, uh, any bright spot? Oh, you know what I brought up yesterday on the show? We were talking to uh, my lovely wife, Stephanie, who's um, uh, she's a therapist. We were talking about mental health issues. And one of the things that we brought up was your attempt last year to try and legalize, well, I'll call it psilocybin, right? But it, you know, it's it's mad the chemical that's found in magic mushrooms. Are you planning on uh, making that same legislative push in this upcoming session? Absolutely. Uh, you know what's interesting? That was something that um, you know was suggested to me by uh, you know a couple friends of mine in the political world, and it's it's an issue that I'd followed loosely over the last uh, maybe decade or so, um, as other states have kind of attempted uh, to do that. And you know, it's something I'd always supported on philosophical grounds. But I really didn't have any concept of how many people were very passionate about that uh, that, that idea. Uh, the the number of veterans who have struggled with PTSD, uh, with depression, things like that, uh, that have not found relief, that have used these substances and discovered amazing results. Uh, you know, initially I was I was pretty skeptical uh, as to whether or not uh, you know it actually was a was a valid medicine i figured you know i can support this on freedom grounds whether or not it works doesn't matter uh but the more i look into it the more i i, I keep meeting people that just kind of come out of the woodwork that really tell heartfelt stories about how it changed their life and i gotta tell you you know that by itself is enough to to maybe jump on on board this so if, if anybody's skeptical look into it listen to some of these people's stories uh it's really incredible yeah no that's good stuff we're speaking to state representative tony lavasco uh what else tony uh do you have any other initiatives i know i, I spoke to some people who got newly elected um uh benjamin brown uh, who will become a state senator i talked to him about your civil asset forfeiture push last year um uh, last week when he was here in town and he seems open to it seems to be a good crop of new uh, of state senators who are open to discussing the idea of getting rid of civil asset forfeiture but my buddy scott fawn says you can't do that because it makes the police angry and you can't do that as a republican in this state what do you think well, I think I have uh, not had problems making the police angry in the past, so it's certainly <laughs> not, uh, not unprecedented for me. Um, you know, this is an issue that I have worked on for several years now. Uh, you know, we get a little bit closer every year. Uh, it's a long-term thing, as much as I'd love to pretend like we could just, you know, get rid of it tomorrow. Uh, the reality is, as you say, there, there's a lot of law enforcement uh, presence that uh, very much wants to keep the status quo. Uh, I will say this. There is more and more awareness on the public front. And, you know, I've, I've actually had law enforcement call me and say, you know, what, what can we do to maybe, uh, maybe make the optics of this a little better? And I, I mean, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know, we'd like to keep doing something like this. We'd like to keep having this revenue. Um, we, we certainly think that it, it you know, helps, uh, uh, you know, go after the bad guys. But we're starting to realize that people think this looks really bad. And when things that we do look really bad, it's hard for us to be effective doing our jobs. So we need to make some changes. 
And, and the fact that, that that's starting to happen and now those conversations are starting to become more, more common uh, gives me some hope that we're finally starting, starting to make some progress. So that's a really good thing. I'm glad to hear that, Tony. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's happening on the national level here. We are the Wake Up America show, after all. Uh, and I'm just curious, what do you think about Republicans' chances in the midterms this, this fall? You know, I think we'll do well. Uh, I don't know that there's necessarily know that we're going to going to do quite as well as we prefer. Uh, I certainly think the the very surprise reaction to the Dobbs decision uh, has uh, has definitely been something that we need to to navigate well. Uh, you know, I think everyone had assumed that that would be a, you know a huge victory uh, for the right, and it come when it comes to electoral politics. And while it's certainly a great victory, uh, you know, philosophically and, and, you know, for the principles, uh, you know, it's actually kind of interesting to see how people have reacted negatively to that, uh, even kind of in the middle and the independent side of things. Dobbs is the, so think, was the abortion decision? Correct, correct. Uh, and so I, I think, you know, our, our national level candidates need to be mindful of that when they're, they're talking about these issues that, uh, you know, it, it's not necessarily the slam dunk that we thought it was. And, you know, tread lightly. Mm, okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah, we're speaking to State Representative Tony Lavasco about that. Now, when it comes to, um, you know, Joe Biden and the Democrats, you know, what we're hearing, you know, the national news media and trending on Twitter right now is the, the word civil war. Kathy Griffin says that if you vote for Democrats, you're voting for democracy. If you vote for Republicans, you're voting for civil war. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think that uh, she has an interesting definition of civil war. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> You know, and the, the more that the, the left decides to amp up this rhetoric of, of us versus them, I, I think that does help help the right. I think, you know, the, the reality is uh, nobody likes to be told that, you know, they're they're an outsider, that they're, you know, not part of the, the, the cool kids club. And the, the more that the left decides to shrink the group of acceptable thought to the point where everyone feels like they can't be comfortable in it, the more they're going to lose support. Yeah, uh, I, I get that it helps their base and you know gets them excited, but it's a really stupid strategy to win elections. So I, I hope they keep talking like that. Yeah, no kidding, Tony Lavasco, State Representative Tony Lavasco, your first appearance on the show, hopefully of many. Thank you very much for your time today. Grateful to have you on the Wake Up America show. Thanks, Austin. Thank you. All right, that was a great interview, and we've got plenty more great show for you today. We're going to go to a commercial break, but first, let me give you the phone number if you want to text the show. I'd love to hear your reaction. You can text the program this morning at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. We're going to go to break, and when we get back, we're going to talk to Edie Vogel about Jennifer Lawrence dreaming of Tucker Carlson, and we'll get her take on the Tony Labosco interview when we get back at the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. shooting things, but whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work, but when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing, the Templar knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire.
Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets, and new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right. Good morning. It's time to rise in freedom. Austin Peterson here on the Wake Up America show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're glad to have you here. Joining us now in studio, my good friend, Edie Vogel. Edie, good morning. How are you today? Boy, we're stepped up in here today. Yes, we are. We've really upgraded, haven't we? It's absolutely uh very lovely in here. Good. Well, in we're in this studio digs. In this not it's a nice studio, oh, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yes, oh, yes. Well, Edie? And, I, and I uh uh this chair it's very comfy compared to those rolling things that I had <laughs> <done. laughs> So thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Edie. Yeah. We're glad to have yeah. you here. Thanks for joining me on the second Wake Up America show of all time, uh, second of many uh, appearances. We'll be glad to have you on this new program. Thank you. A and I'm uh, interested first to hear your take on the Tony Lavasco interview. Your thoughts? Well, I remember, uh, you know, when we were on uh, talking about it all last year you would you reached out to him as a representative of st louis county or um, st charles county excuse me and you know he he represents himself as a elected official who knows what he talks about so i'm going to say shortly he talks the talk without any um hesitation of what his feelings and what his knowledge is of the subject matter that's been uh, presented to him as a representative of his uh, of his territory. Yeah, Tony's great, and he's the type of person who he's not going to he's not going to vote for a bill that he thinks is unconstitutional, or if it, even if it's being sold as a tax cut, I, if it over if it does more harm than good, he's not going to vote for it. Uh, as much as I think I know about the way that system works with legislation presented by 
individuals and then the committee and the bringing it out of committee and discussing it. I, th- I think he's, he did a really good job of explaining it uh, with this uh, special session coming up in regards to uh, tax cuts. Mm-hmm. And I liked the way he referred to it as um, more fluff than really something that really will affect the average taxpayer's pocketbook, mm-hmm. if I understood him correctly. And uh, when they talk about the lowest tax bra- bracket, I think that I'm understanding that would be for the people who don't pay much taxes anyway, I know, right? I know. Yeah, it's always some kind of a gimmick, you, you know, know what I mean? And, and I did not know that the, the rules have been established over the years about something that automatically clicks in. I guess, with the amount of income that comes into the state. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not uh, making a mistake, I think that right now the city, the state coffers are overflowing with money. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've got um, a clip that I want to play for you, for you here real quick. Edie, this is, um, I want to get your reaction to this. This is the White House press secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre. Oh, Oh, I know. I know. Let's take her right off the list. I know. I just want you to listen to this clip for a moment and uh, I'm going to get your reaction to this one. Um, Take a listen. The new attention on the national intelligence. You tweet. Oh, I knew this was coming. Small election. I was wondering, Peter, when you were going to ask me that question. Oh, sure. You tweeted an election. You tweeted Brian Kemp stole an election. If denying election results is extreme now. Yeah. Wow. So let's let's be really clear. That that comparison that you made is just ridiculous. I have been I have been well, you're asking me you're asking me a question. Let me answer it. And you said Wait, ridiculous. I was I was talking specifically at that time of what was happening with voting rights and the what was in danger of voting rights. That's what I was speaking to at the time. She said that she the- said that Trump stole the election. She said that that uh, uh, that Kemp stole the election from Stacey Abrams. Uh, so you know listen, what they. Like, go ahead, go ahead, Edie. Go, go ahead, go. <laughs> it's like we're living in a twilight zone, mm-hmm. but the twilight zone shows of fifty years ago at least made sense. Right. This whole debacle mm-hmm. of people denying this election fraud mm-hmm. is. Just bull. I, well, I mean, I, I mean, come on, people, wake up. Well, it's just funny because, like, you social media has changed so much, you know, and we're streaming on a lot of different platforms right now. And I mean, in theory, if they, I mean, they're listening to us saying this right now, uh, you know, they, they could take us down for saying the exact same things that they, that people, the actual white house press secretary was saying back in 2016 about, about Donald Trump. They said that it was, they said he stole the election. It was a Russian hack. They said that it was a Russian I, I, hacker that, just, that stole the election. I mean, it's just a nightmare, and, but I mean, I just love this hypocrisy. I mean, here again, here she is. Oh, you tweet. Oh, I knew this Trump was coming. Stole an election. And that's Peter. Yeah, that's, that's Peter. Of course, it's Peter Ducey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so fortitude to ask the questions of that dumb bimbo that's sitting there telling us the the patriots of the United States of America that the election was stolen. Oh, I'll start cussing. Okay. Well, you can, well. Here's the good news. You can cuss. You can. When you all had the stream going yesterday about who's going to be the first person to drop an F bomb, and it might be me. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry. it's okay. Just so you know, uh, cur- curse words are allowed on the Wake Up America show. Uh, we just we just try and avoid it because you know we do get um, younger people who listen in and stuff. We're just trying to set well, a good the example. Younger people but, need you know, to know that we older people say have, curse life, words. have life experiences. You know that we're trying to pass on to them so they can be productive citizens exactly. and and take per- <laughs> per- be participants in the process. Exactly. And, exactly. And I and I think I, I think we're seeing that. I think we're seeing. We might not hear it on the mainstream media, but I think there is a core group of the young people who want to be informed but they're so uh, they have so much other stuff that they have to think they have to worry about listen young people don't worry about it pay attention mm. pay attention to uh of of people that have spirit and guts and want to protect our great society of the United States of America because we're the last beacon of hope for the whole world and this last 2 years have been 
a mess. Oh, it's true. It's, it's just a nightmare. When I mean, when you look at overseas, what's going on with their power grid, and they're telling, you know, they're it's like almost like as bad as California. <laughs> They've well, got no power. They're telling their citizens because you know they 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 were so de- highly dependent on Russian oil. Many yeah, of these European yeah. countries, and they're, this winter they might freeze to death over there, and, you and know, we might have it s- still coming here. You yeah, know, you yeah. you just I don't know. I, I just but back to your original question about. Uh, Representative Lavasco, he does a very good job, and his uh, his voters should be proud of him. Yes, he does. His voters should be proud yes. of him. He's def- he had a really tight re-election there, and then his, yeah. his last race, but yeah. he made it, and now yeah. he's going to come back here, yeah. and he's going to fight for limited government. That's well, what he believes in. Uh, isn't that what we're supposed to have? Yeah. We the people? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking to Edie Vogel. Edie Vogel joining us live in studio for her first appearance on the Wake Up America show. No, 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 no. Uh, Edie, real quick, I just want to do a a quick you know, thank you because when you came in here today, you made a generous donation to the program. And I just want to let you know how grateful I am because it, you know, now that I'm independent, uh-huh, yes. right? This is kind of like operating like a, a daily wire or like, you know, a lot of, of smaller upstart shows right. and networks, you know, they do take donations in order to spread their message, uh-huh, yes. kind of like Patreons and things yes. like that. And you made a very generous donation today. Well, I'm super grateful for I, that. I can, I can give you a little, little character story or that you can laugh at. Let's hear it. This old, gal has two checkbooks okay <laughs> and and one checkbook is for things like this mm-hmm. and buying myself diamonds and furs and cars <laughs> and the other checkbook is to make sure that i pay my uh utilities yes. and and uh keep all the keep my house in order mm-hmm. which is the responsibility of a homeowner you know and my house is 160 some years old so it's a constant it's a constant upkeep but i feel like that uh, the people before me did it they were hard workers uh and i always kind of refer to my family as having old money because right. it's been around for a long time right. but there's still a group of core people in my family business who work hard and uh, to to help well, help the community well, with wanna, our products yeah. and you know if i didn't have the uh, that that to fall back onto but like i said my donation to you is from the, my heart because i like what you stand for you know you don't you get to the you cut the mustard and get to the seed and we're and we're and that's what we need to hear well i just wanted to say thank you and i'm super grateful we've had uh you know many people step up and make donations to help get this show up on the air on its feet and out the door right uh and you know uh, so i i definitely want to say you know thank you and i also want to ask those who are listening right now uh to make a generous donation to sign up to become a monthly sponsor uh we've got a great incentive program going on right now for people who sign up. If you go to wakeupamericashow.com slash support, then you can see that there's a whole bunch of different tiers of levels of monthly supporters. And what I would like to ask of you right now is to become a 1776 a month supporter, uh, join Peterson's Patriots. And if you do that right now, you're going to get um, monthly prize drawings to win items from our AP for Liberty shop. You're going to get a code that's going to give you a 20% discount at AP for Liberty shop. So uh, you could get a chance to win some prizes and you could um, and you get a 20% discount in the shops where you uh, buy your merch. Also, everybody who signs up to become a, a supporter is also going to be entered to win this awesome wooden sign behind my head right now. You can see this. It says, uh, freedom is now natural Ty- tyranny is man-made it's a it is very beautiful yeah beautiful wood sign that we're going to be giving away so everybody who signs up to become a monthly supporter at wakeupamericashow.com slash support is automatically entered to win that sign if you can't make a monthly donation i under- but you still want to be entered to win uh that's that's totally fine you can also just send us your email and you can do that by just going to apforlibertyshop.com uh, when you do that we'll get your email address and you'll automatically be entered to win but um but your uh generosity will help to keep this show on the air putting out liberty content every single day more great interviews with people like Edie 
uh, and more great interviews with people like Tony Lavasco and, of course, Judge Napolitano, who's going to be joining us this morning at 8.09. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break, and then Edie, when we get back, we're going to talk about dreaming of Tucker Carlson. He is quite dreamy, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty dreamy. All right, we're going to talk about that when we get back on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. show with Austin Peterson. This show has been a huge venture for our family, so we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty, and I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel-proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I joined Peterson's Patriots myself, just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, made a big investment in chips just before Congress votes on a bill that would give $52 billion in subsidies and tax credits to the chip industry. Over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he received from you? No. And I believe... If you come to our border, you will be turned back. Do not come. Do not come. Have you ever overseen, have you ever received a royalty payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. Well, well, here's the thing is, why don't you let us know?
Welcome back to the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I'm your host, Austin Peterson. Joining me now still in studio, my good friend, Edie Vogel. Edie, thanks for sticking around with us today. You're welcome. Glad this is a very pleasurable uh, experience. Good. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself today. So I'm excited about this next topic because it was just cracking me up when I was reading this yesterday. People Magazine reported Jennifer Lawrence reveals she's had recurring nightmares about Fox News's <clears throat> Tucker Carlson. Back in 2017, Tucker Carlson called Jennifer Lawrence out of touch on his Fox News show while taking her climate change con uh, comments out of context. Well, that's what that's the way People Magazine is reporting it. But uh, she's told Vogue, I can't F with people who aren't political anymore. Okay? So you live in the United States of America. You have to be political. It's too dire. Politics are killing people. Uh, Lawrence said, it breaks my heart because America had the choice between a woman and a dangerous, dangerous jar of mayonnaise. And they were like, well, we can't have a woman. Let's go with a jar of mayonnaise. But then this is really the part that, I, that sticks out to me, Edie, and I'd, I'd like to talk to you about this in depth. She says, I don't want to disparage my family, but I know that a lot of people are in similar position with their families. How could you raise a daughter from birth and believe that she doesn't deserve equality? How? Um, so she's claiming essentially that she kind of like distances herself from family members who don't share her political views. What are your thoughts on that? Ooh. Mm. All right. We're, we've all got that okay. one uncle, you know what I mean? Like we've all kind of yeah, but you know. I don't I don't want to I don't want to uh agree with her on this business about women can't do what she uh, that's crazy. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And so but I do agree with probably family discourse when it comes to talking about politics, mm -hmm. and um, fortunately, my family, we're all right. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So then, you know, you're lucky in that sense, and right? We're but, lucky. Okay. Right. But I, I think I do know of situations where there are families that probably don't want to discuss it at the Thanksgiving table. Oh, for sure. Okay. So um, I do. Yeah. I. I I don't have an answer for that. I'm kind of speech. I'm not speechless, but it's, 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 you have to be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Somebody just texted in at 573-319-1586. You can text us at 573-319-1586. One listener texted in and said, people are saying Tucker Carlson is planning, I don't know what it is. It got cut off on there. Sorry about that. Um, again, if you, could, if you text us, uh, it's 573-319-1586. Um, people are saying Tucker Carlson is planning to run for president. His populism versus Trump is a lot more overwhelming. What do you think about that? You think Tucker Carlson would no. run for president? No. No, probably not, right? No. No. Another listener texted in at 573-319-1586 and said that, um, okay, that was the best knife ad ever. They liked the yeah, knife ad. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. I, I, I the, said. The, the, uh, yeah, the, um, the commercial that <laughs> I did for the Templar knives. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just... It's it's catching. Yeah, it's got good music to it. Yeah, and uh, I uh, you get a slash five page, stars. Yeah. uppercut tactical slash pages yes. slash template yes. not. That's well, a lot of slashes. Now, I mean, if you're really gonna, <laughs> if you think about it, I know we all heard the uh, this all that stabbing going on in Sas such Sas Saskatchewan. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was wild. Because the people that was up insane. there can't carry a gun to protect themselves, dude. I so, just. I mean, I. I just, it's, uh, that is unimaginable. I mean, that's just, un it's barbaric. Canada has fallen. Absolutely. It, it, they have, they have seriously fallen. I, it, that was, a, that was wild when I saw that story. And that kind of stuff happens all the time in countries with, with gun well, control. I mean, you know, like, you know, it, what, what was it just like, not even six months ago that just Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was out there saying, you can't defend yourself with a gun here in, in Canada. That's not something that you can do. What is that? I bet, I bet I can find that clip. But I mean, like, you know, in China, they have those things where it's like, you know, they'll have these mass stabbings, you know, they, they'll go out there and they'll, and they'll, they'll stab like 30 people. You well, know what I mean? I just, I, it's just, it's, it's barbaric. Yeah. <laughs> that, it, that the, 
Oh, well. I well what do you mean, oh, well? Well, I mean, it seems like we're trying to protect ourselves against events like that by our ability with the Second Amendment, mm-hmm. which has been in our Constitution since it was formed. Yeah. And we're interested. Here it is. Okay. Here it is. Hold on. Uh, sorry. It's using okay. legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. <laughs> what this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. In other words, in other words, what do you mean? Other words, we know what you're trying to say, there, idiot. Like you know, you're putting a a ban on people's ability to be able to defend themselves. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um. But you know, but I like I like how this all just came out of my uh my Templar knife ad. Uh. Yeah. So definitely, (laughs) if you're interested, then they're awesome knives. I got one one myself. If you want one, you can uh, go to that. uh, Do me a favor. Use that link that's in the commercial. It's Uppercut Tactical slash Pages slash Templar dash knives and then use my code AP for Liberty uh, when you do it. And that, you know, helps me get paid as well. So um, uh, you can text the program this morning at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. But, you know, Jennifer Lawrence, she has nightmares. I mean, she's admitting that she dreams of Tucker Carlson quite frequently. I wish Jennifer Lawrence dreamed of me. But, uh, you know, I mean, she's like, you know, a super hot celebrity. And so she people listen to what she has to say, even if she's stupid, Edie. Well, I, I think today you've informed the listeners of your wonderful newsworthy story mm-hmm. about Jennifer Lawrence dreaming about <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Carlson. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think I think the real story there, uh, Edie, is that she is cutting herself off from family members, and that that's happening more often. You're seeing, you know, liberals, I. I you know, I have liberal friends from college that just refuse to talk yeah. to me anymore. Yeah. Right? I don't. I don't have any family members. I think necessarily, like we, because we we try and be you know a little more tight tight knit and look past all that stuff. And it's hard. You know, once you kind of like run for office, like everybody knows where you stand and what you're all about and all that kind of stuff. So I can't avoid it. You know, because it's it's part of who I am. Right? Fighting activism and fighting for limited government is liberty mm-hmm. and liberty is. I mean, I'm AP for Liberty, right? right? So, I mean, right. it's like, so I, I can't get away from it like some people can. When I go to Thanksgiving dinner, people are like, you know, hey, what, you know, what have you been up to? I'm like, well, I'm trying to cut your taxes and get the government out of your life, you know? And they're like, no, give me more taxes, daddy. Oh, please. I need the taxes, daddy. And I mean, not at my family dinner, but yeah, I mean, when yeah. I talk, usually I have friends, we'll have friends over. And, things and like I, that. I think you're not alone in that. I think that's mm-hmm. a, it's a, it's probably very, um, accurate you know people like people you know what it is a lot of times too is like the reason why people i think love government ed is because they're addicted to fear they and they're and they they're terrified of everything and so they think that government can keep them safe you know i've been talking about this like as uh, you know correlated as with uh, the lack of religiosity in society mm-hmm. as fewer and fewer people believe in god more and more people believe in government because this is just my view, Edie, and you know, I hope this doesn't offend you, but I, I think the reason people believe in, in God is because of a fear of death. And, and so, to me, and I think Stephanie and I were talking about this just the other day, we we're having this conversation about the fear of death. People think that government can save them from dying, right? They think that government, you know, write a bill to well, make it so that it's illegal stop, to die. Stop, stop. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right, yeah, yeah. because of the when the pandemic, the so-called pandemic, you know, overcame the whole world, which mm-hmm. it did, in, according to the mainstream media, I still am a believer in the fact that if you had a true pandemic, you would have seen all the people dead in the street. Okay, now I know I'm, that's a right, little, that's right. a little that's a little radical. Been, yeah, it would been okay. like no, that would be like the bubonic and, plague. You're and, right, I, and I'm not denying that something occurred. And yes, there were deaths, and all of our families we experienced that with some one of our loved ones. But back to your point about believing in God in regards to that, yeah, you're not offending me, but that was my take on it. Listen, this is in God's hands. Okay, mm-hmm. and I I I said to self. You know, if I get this so-called virus and it kills me, that's the way it's supposed to be, Mm -hmm. okay? And you're right. The people drank the Kool-Aid enough to think that they got to go and get all of these shots, vaccine after vaccine after vaccine, when there is no approved 
FDA vaccine that was shown to the people with the with the uh, well, scientific world. I think now in Canada they're saying that um, they're saying that they're going to like get a booster like every six months or something I, like that. I mean, you're every, not giving me. I'm not taking. Months? I'm never taking. An, I'm not. I never took the jab. I'm not taking the jab. I don't care. I'm at an age where if I croak off tomorrow, walk out the street, get ran over by a bus. That's the way it is, you know. And I'm not making fun of. I'm not making fun of the whole thing. But realistically, mm -hmm. you know, something overtook our whole country to screw it up yeah i uh, i found a clip of uh justin mm. trudeau talking about uh defending yourself with a gun in in canada take a listen to this and there are debates and we have a, a, a culture where the difference is guns can be used for hunting or for sport shooting in canada and there's lots of gun owners and they're mostly law respecting and, and, and law abiding but you can't use a gun for self-protection in canada in the, that's not a right i know in the the hell, hold on, hold on, hold listen about. to that listen to that he's eight up but you can't use a gun for self-protection in mm -hmm. canada that's not a right that you have in the constitution or anywhere else if you try and buy a a gun, he's hey, it's for self-protection. No, you don't get that. You get it for hunting. You can get it for sport shooting. You can take it to the range. Uh, no problem, as long as you go through our rigorous background checks. But you cannot use it. I mean, if you, imagine yourself in a situation he where needs some of that stuff that Lavasco was talking about for the magic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a uh, prime minister up in he our friends minister in canada well he's nuts america's hat oh my oh my god, god. oh, oh Lord man. Have mercy I, it's oh. just that is some funny stuff all right well yeah. uh Edie, mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. we, I, you know as much as i'd love to do this forever uh we got to go to okay. a commercial break uh break number three here and uh when we get back <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit more i've got a, a picture of people deciding to go canoeing out on the mississippi river Edie, and um well, the responses to it are uh, online have been pretty hilarious. We'll talk about that when we get back on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients. And after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive, and if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I have fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. to be encouraged instead of punished, this is not our inheritance. If truth no longer matters, we will not remain free for long. This is our generation's challenge, to defend our founders' hope that we the people could self-govern if we defend our right to get the facts. And right now, we're building the only defense a free people have, the facts on every politician every position they held, every statement they've made, every vote they've made, and any cash they've taken. It's the real history on those now pandering for your vote. There are hundreds of young people building our defense right now, and they need your help. We all have our passions, but as our ancestors knew, 
When events become so foul they threaten us all, we must stand and defend each other. Please, have our backs. Join us at BoatSmart.org. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. As the world faces the challenges of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Lions recognize that kindness matters now more than ever. And Lions and Leos are finding ways to continue to serve our communities, including... Hello, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to American Frenchy Bush. This is my Didi's website, and I've really decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever. And we're back. Wake, welcome to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. Grateful to have you here. Edie Vogel still joining us live and in studio. Edie, how are we doing so far? Well, I think we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm grateful to have you as a regular guest for my new show. Um, Edie, I've got, uh, you're not going to be able to see this picture that I'm going to pull up on the screen right now. If you're watching the show, you should be able to see the picture of the people. Now they're out in a canoe and you can see in the background is the picture of the St. Louis Arch. Okay. It's a bunch. So it looks like a big family out there, and they're all in a big canoe, and they're all out on the Mississippi River. Um, and they're encouraging people in downtown St. Louis to hop aboard a voyage Voyager canoe and join Big Muddy Adventures for a trip down the mighty Mississippi with their expert guides. Make plans for this exciting riverfront tour through November. Book your adventure here. Now, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't lived in St. Louis, ED, but um, from what I understand about the Mississippi River, it's not the cleanest river. Uh, the, not not necessarily the one that you'd want to go and uh, do any canoeing in. I know that, not that you're like the canoeing type or anything, but I mean, like, <laughs> That's right. but from what I understand, the river outside of St. Louis is a little bit dirty. Um, but the comments on the picture are really what I think are the the best part of this. Because the first comment on this one is <clears throat> is actually state uh, former state representative Justin Hill. Uh, who says, this is obviously a fake background. No sane person would float that stretch of Chicago's septic tank. Um, and then Dave Cook responded to them saying, Mississippi doesn't come from Chicago. Uh, but Justin Hill then said, but the Illinois River does, which dumps into the Mississippi north of St. Louis. Okay. okay. And then Justin Hill said, when it's too dangerous to do any activity on land in St. Louis. Um DeMarco Gage says they have to be from out of town because locals would never. Uh, somebody said, I'll pass on the Lewis and Clark expedition experience. Uh, the look on the little boy's face says it all. Is this really our vacation? <laughs> I can think of a lot better vacations than going for a canoe trip on the St. Louis River. How about you? Um, I, I would have to occur uh, with your <laughs> analogy. And um, I don't think the, the Mississippi is huge yeah it's huge but it's it's pretty filthy well n not only not only because of the filthiness of it which i can't testify because i can remember seeing it as a you know when i'm down or you cross it from illinois coming over to end up in downtown st louis but the point about <laughs> it's a safe journey a safe place to be Probably because of all the gun violence in the city of St. Louis, you might. You <laughs> it's probably might, safer to be on the river than it is to be the in the city. Yeah. But I, if you're talking about, and like you said, I could not see the picture. Are we talking about just a standard, just a picture of a family in a canoe with a life vest. But then somebody on the on the uh, picture said, "Those aren't life jackets; they're bulletproof vests." Okay, there you for go. All the straight okay, okay, talk, Well, I mean, uh, yeah, that's another that's, one. Another comment yeah. says, "Dad, why are we the only canoe on the river?" 
uh, Whitney Lay on the, on the picture says, I saw this and originally thought it was a search and rescue post. Um, somebody true, said, true. somebody said, great. We will all have float by shootings now. Yeah. I, I just can't imagine, you know, yeah, we've all floated the current or, yeah. you know, those smaller mm -hmm. creeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they branch out and mm -hmm. get big at certain point, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, you, I, I didn't know that would not be my idea of a, not a, not your idea of a good time. I mean, I would, be, I would get on a big, a river boat. Cruise. Yeah, oh, yeah, like on the Mississippi, the Admiral, nice. you know, the, you know, uh, that's from back in my day, the big stainless steel tub mm -hmm. called the Admiral. And, uh, well, even down at the Lake of the Ozarks, they had, a they had a, a tour boat down there. Now we do have, Don. we do have some nice rivers yes. uh, in, in Missouri, yes. um, that you can canoe on, but the Mississippi is uh, not one of them. Uh, off my list. There are a lot of people who do like uh, kayaks down the Missouri River and things well, like they that. Have that well, big, yeah. the, the big, they just had the yeah. big 340. Right. You know, the race mm -hmm. uh, from Kansas City to St. Louis. And I, I, I uh, think that that's doable. I mean, they have participants in that, hundreds of participants. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think that's more of a challenge of your uh, strength and endurance more than an, an enjoyable vacation. Yeah, for sure. You can text the show this morning at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. One of our uh, listeners texted in this morning and said, isn't it funny that Western liberal suburban women tend to like soft-spoken men as their leader, like Justin Trudeau? Nanny state much. Uh, another listener says, Castro Jr. setting the stage. Uh, another listener texted in and said, you appear to be shadow band on the YouTubes. Can't find you at all. Channel is there, but not the show slash live stream. A Andy, that's my bad. I know you guys wanted the YouTube live stream. So just so you know, the uh, YouTube live stream just isn't working for whatever reason. I'll try and get it up sometime in the next few minutes. But um, uh, as this is the first week of the show and don't, yeah, exactly. Second, 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 second show, folks, second day. Up, lighten up yeah. a little bit. Go, you, go to another venue. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, there are there are a lot of places you can watch it. You can I watch it, it on Facebook yesterday. And yeah, I had no problem whatsoever. You can watch it on Facebook, and I'll tell you, um, in you know, econom from an economic perspective, right now, the best place to watch and comment it for us to help us is on Facebook at facebook.com slash AP for Liberty. Um, but if it doesn't work there, it should it'll always be at wakeupamericashow.com and it also there's a chat there as well. So definitely head over there. Uh if you're ever like, oh, it's not on Facebook or it's not on uh YouTube or whatever. Uh, we've got a great show coming up for you. Uh, plenty of uh, great guests, exciting guests and topics coming up. At 8.03 this morning, we're going to speak to Judge Andrew Napolitano about the right to be left alone. Oh, and, yes. terrific. I can't wait. Exactly. So we're going to hear from Judge Andrew Napolitano on the right to be left alone. Uh, if you have a question for the judge, send them in at 573-319-1586. Then I've got a bunch more great topics for Edie, who's going to stick around with us for the rest of the show. Um, a video from Libs of TikTok. You know, we love our Libs oh, of TikTok. My favorite. Yes. Yeah, we're going to play Libs of TikTok, where we hear from a young pediatrician talking about how hormone blockers or just a way to pause puberty. Just put it on pause. Oh, As if you can just take a biological machine like a human body and just put it on pause like a tape. And then, oh, if you want to do it again, you just press play after that. Well, we'll talk about that and I'll play that clip for you. Uh, then after that, they got another Veritas Project Sting. Oh, Edie. Oh, we got I can't wait. Don't you love it? When yes. You, oh, we've got another uh, Project Veritas Sting. We're definitely going to love playing you know, that okay, audio. What? You Go know, ahead. Why, why is it that the mainstream media are the deep state. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they haven't squelched the very toss. Oh, they, I'm sure they have do, they're I, doing I everything mean, they can. I mean, remember when they did the raid because they remember the Ashley Biden's diary when it came out and showed yes, that she and, had been. Yes. And they were let off of that because there was the two people. They that, had legitimately yeah, gotten the, the yeah, diary. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, but I just can't believe that the, the evil ones have not done something more to Veritas See, to and, get it off the And that's the thing. When you're a danger to the deep state, when you're a danger mm -hmm. to the government, when mm -hmm. you're a danger to the increasing expansion of government, you're going to get an FBI raid. 
you know, well, we're going to talk. We'll, we're going to talk about that with Judge Andrew Napolitano and much, much more. Uh, but before we go to our commercial break, I want to make an appeal to you if you're enjoying the content this morning in the program and you want to help me be able to hire a producer to be able to solve things like the YouTube issues or like the light that just went off behind Edie's head that I have to turn back on during the commercial break. Um, then make a generous donation right now today. Go to wakeupamericashow.com slash support and sign up to become a member of Peterson's Patriots. You get all sorts of great uh, um, uh, incentives to be a monthly supporter. At 1776 a month, you'll be entered into monthly prize drawings from the AP for Liberty shop, and you receive a 20% discount on everything at the shop. Every order that you make, you get a 20% discount. And the holidays are coming up, so I'm sure that you probably want to get a lot of these cool merchandise and maybe a 3D printed Donald Trump Buddha like you see down here for somebody in your family, for the Trump lover in your life. So we'll be back with Judge Andrew Napolitano and more Edie Vogel when we come back at Wake Up America, uh, the wakeupamericashow.com. Hello, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bush. This is my Didi's website, and I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bush is. But I've decided that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bush is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet. But it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Dee Dee made Fringy Bullshit to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Dee Dee really likes it. Dee Dee said it's really handy because us Fringies got thick necks. Need something really tough. People think Fringies are little. But if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm. Beefcake, yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes, you like that? Big brother, please focus. Frenchy Bush. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bush blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender hosts 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble, won't we? We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Ever hear the
school district in Southwest Missouri has recently brought back corporal punishment as a means of disciplining their students. If parents choose to opt into the new policy, it permits certified personnel employed by the school district to spank their children with a paddle. The new policy requires that students be subjected to physical punishment in private, accompanied by a witness also employed by the school district, and prohibits hitting children in the head or face. One father who has two daughters enrolled in the school district in Missouri, ages eight and six, chose to opt into the new policy and says that he thinks it will make students stop and think before acting out. The Food and Drug Administration yesterday approved a new round of COVID-19 booster shots without human testing. Instead, FDA officials are relying on data from mouse trials to prove the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines. The White House has been pushing for a fall booster campaign to begin this month in September. And because of the short deadline, vaccine makers have only had time to test the reformulated shots in mice, not people. This will be the first round of boosters distributed without human trials and first shots could be administered as soon as next week. The agency uses a similar approval process with flu shots, which are updated each year without human testing to keep up with mutating flu viruses and are generally 40 to 60 percent effective. Meanwhile, coronavirus cases and hospitalizations have both fallen steadily throughout the month of August. And according to recent data, an average of 400 to 500 people in the United States a day are dying because of COVID-19, an average that is far lower than at most points during the pandemic. Fewer than half of the people in the United States have received a single booster shot. Good morning. It's Austin Peterson for the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. It's time to rise in freedom. Joining us now on the line, my good friend, one of the foremost constitutional scholars, lawyers, a judge, Judge Andrew Napolitano on the line right now. Good morning, Judge. Welcome to the show. Uh, Good morning, Austin. Congratulations on this great new show. And I'm thrilled to be with you once again, as I was thrilled every Wednesday your uh, former and radio. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate that very much, Judge. And our listeners to our new program are definitely going to benefit from all of your wisdom, from your years of experience fighting for freedom, fighting for limited government, fighting for the Constitution, which is what we're all about here on the Wake Up America show. Judge, your new column that appears at judgenap.com every week came out yesterday, and it was fabulous. Uh, I hope my readers Uh, Our listeners are reading it every week, as well as listening to your podcast, the Judging Freedom Podcast, which you can download on all of the major podcast networks. The Judging Freedom Podcast is a terrific place to go and to get pro-liberty perspectives. But when I read your column yesterday, Judge, the one about the right to be left alone, it was perfect timing, because this is a discussion that we were having in the battle between conservatism, leftism, liberalism, libertarianism, the war of ideas that's happening right now, because the leftists are not going to leave us alone, and we know this. The conservatives say, well, they would like to be left alone, judge, but they say because the other side won't leave us alone, the conservatives have decided to force their views and their mantras on us as well. Judge, is there a is there a right to be left alone, or do we live in a society where taxation is the price we pay to live in a civilized society? Well, you know, you raise a host of, of wonderful issues, and um, I disagree with some of our libertarian uh, brethren who believe that the right to be left alone is a root of this property right. Uh, their argument is it's a legitimate argument, but it's not expansive enough because you have the right to be left alone even when you're not on your own property. But their their argument is you own property. You know, uh, it, it could be an apartment, a, a condo, uh, an acre of property, or, or a multi-hundred acre farm. You have three rights. You have the right to use the property as you see fit. You have the right to alienate the property 
pledge it, the lease it, to sell it. And you have the right to exclude anyone from the property, including the government. Any one of those rights is taken from you, then it's no longer private property. So a lot of our libertarian brethren, mainly the, the Rothbardians, as in Murray Rothbard, will argue that property right, that privacy comes from property rights because you can exclude anyone from your property. You can kick me out of your garden park and don't like the color of um, of my shirt. Uh, you can kick the government out if they don't have uh, a search warrant based on probable cause and signed by a neutral judge. Before you can do that, you have the right to privacy on your property. I have argued, along with uh, Aquinas and along with John Locke, that the right to privacy is a natural human right. Because there are areas of human behavior, and we all engage in these areas at some point in time every day, there are areas of human behavior and human judgment that are simply not subject to the wishes of the government. And because those areas of behavior are natural to our bodies and our existence, that right to be left alone comes from the same place as a right to think as we wish and say what we think and publish what we say to associate or not to associate, to defend ourselves against crazies and against uh, and against tyrants, to travel to own property. That right comes from our humanity. Whether you believe that humans are the highest, best um, uh, things on the planet because we can last a lot, or whether, whether you believe we were created by a supreme being gave us the ability to rationalize. From either source, human beings, by their rationalizing and understanding of themselves, recognize the existence of natural rights that come from within us. Everybody has natural rights. I just cataloged most of them. It doesn't matter where you were born. You have the same natural rights as everybody else that the government can't interfere with. Okay, so then... The right to be left alone now for the right to privacy is integral to the humanity of every person. So then here's a, a question. Let's go down a brief rabbit hole there on that one, Judge. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking to Judge Andrew Napolitano, host of the Judging Freedom podcast. You can read his weekly column at judgenap.com. If every person has these intrinsic natural rights, and if you and I agree that one of those natural rights is the right to self-defense and to own a gun, let's say, you know, We'll call them technically what the government calls them, you know, illegal immigrants. If someone crosses the border from Mexico into the United States, do they have a right to bring a gun across the border or to, to come to the United States and, and have a Second Amendment right to firearms ownership? Brethren, and the short answer to your question is, Yes. <laughs> the answer to your question is you're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and I have been having problems just like this. <laughs> For years. For years. Yeah. I cannot explain where your mother was when you did the body for Determined by your humanity. Now, again, a lot of my libertarian and all of my conservative brethren go crazy <laughs> when I say this. Yeah. Immigration is, is not people coming from another country. The problem with immigration is so in this country that Korean gives it away. My cousin from Florence, when I lived in the second floor of the barn on my property, was interesting. And is that now what about like uh you know one of the things that people will talk about is this L, you know the Ellis Island approach to immigration where you know my ancestors the Petersons came over here in the height of the progressive era the early 1900s and they had a security check and a disease check and they were done I mean cuz when you think about it there's a lot of cartels in Mexico we, you and I know that they would be gone it, you know eliminated if we or they would be, just become professionalized if we if we ended the war on drugs but if you know a cartel gang member wants to come across the border from Mexico and he wants to bring his gun to do violence, you know, how do we, you know, how should we protect ourselves against that? And how can we tell the difference between someone who has a gun to protect themselves and someone who has a gun to, you know, engage in human trafficking, if you will, Judge? 
nothing wrong with a with a rational, uh, non intrusive uh, check for disease and and likely harm. Government is not in the business of uh, predicting harm. The government is not even in the business of predicting harm. The government is only in the business of prosecuting harm uh, after it happens. God have mercy on us if the government were in the business of predicting harm, which it thinks it is, which is why, getting back to my column, it tracks our every move. It somehow thinks by tracking the moves of law-abiding people, it's going to help them catch the free. It doesn't work, but that's what they uh, that's what they like to do. Just- if I comes into this country wanting to do uh, evil, how do we stop him? By the right to keep and bear arms. By by allowing people to carry the same weapons that the government right? uh and by uh, allowing people to train and use them. Yeah. When and, Governor Hochul of New York signed the third legislation that you can only carry in New York if you have good moral character. Good moral character. It was it was condemning by name. Being carried by a bodyguard within 15 feet of where she was standing. Mm. We know from Justice Scalia's opinion in Heller, that's the one that Biden quoted uh, in his speech the other day in uh, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, I forget where he was, I think Philadelphia. Um, we know that the right to keep and bear arms is a personal, individual right, that's a privacy, that's a speech, just like association. And the government can't interfere with it. Judge, I've got one more question for you before I let you go. This is one of our listeners um, sparked this, and it's a good topic. It's something that a lot of conservatives and libertarians are debating these days. He he says, this is a question for the judge. Uh, Can we really afford to be left alone and not enforce standards when the left's deplorable standards threaten our country? Let me give you an example, Judge, and and see what you think of this. So one of the things that, you know, the debates that we're having in this country is over the teaching of critical race theory in public schools schools. So, you know, you and I would obviously love to get rid of public schools, privatize them. We don't think the government should be in the business of education. It should be a business. But when the left, it, when we have public schools, when we understand that they're going to exist, should we have our people, libertarians and conservatives, go take over the school boards and ensure that they're not teaching things like, you know, hating other people in your class for being white? Or, you know, should we, you know, enforce, you know, curriculum in public schools, if we can't abolish them, that will advocate for the Constitution and for limited government and for, you know, for the values that we hold? You know, should we do that if we can't abolish public schools? Yes, we should. I mean, in in New Jersey, of course, it's kind of out to California for the most part, left, craziest place uh, in the United States. The school boards have all been told, if you don't teach the curriculum, the State Department of Education is mandated, which includes, may offend some people, but I'm quoting, telling five-year-old, five-year-old girls that you don't have to have a penis in order to be a boy, if you don't, uh, they're going to hold back state aid in the way it's structured in, in New Jersey. In schools that don't receive state aid, out of business. they wouldn't even have enough money to turn the electricity on. Uh, so the way to defeat that is, is by electing people who will be either neutral or more rational, more Judeo-Christian uh, in their approach uh, to teach them. But start the local school boards, but again, depending upon the 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 uh, legal structure of the state, it may go all the way up to the governor. In New Jersey, the governor, probably the most powerful governor in the union, vis-a-vis what he can do on his own, and control what local school boards do. I don't know what that's the case in every state in the union. So in some states, yes, you should run for the school board. In other states... It's more difficult. You you need to have a, a rational majority in the legislature or a rational human being in the government. Hmm. This is good stuff, Judge. I can't wait to have you back every Wednesday here at this same time, 8.09 on the Wake Up America show. Judge, you are the host of the Judging Freedom podcast, which you can find on all of the major podcast networks. And you can also so read us. A great thought ringer on why 
you believe the New York Times, and you shouldn't believe the Washington Post that Russia on the cusp of victory in Ukraine. And this will be tremendous humiliation for the globalists in Western Europe and in the state department definitely not going to miss that one judge you are a great man a great friend a great defender of liberty we're grateful to have your time today thank you very much we'll talk, we'll talk to you next week boy wasn't that great that was judge andrew napolitano who was joining us on the show this morning you can't get those kinds of great interviews anywhere else you can only get it here uh on the wake up america show at wakeupamericashow.com we'll be back with more edie vogel to respond to that when we get back at wakeupamericashow.com want an engaging website to boost your business you're just a click away from five star fiber talent hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls it's wild here and we should stay that way we shouldn't allow a european version of conservatism to come and infect us here we like it wide open spaces here you know deep in the heart of texas and all that Peterson. This show has been a huge venture for our family, so we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty, and I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel-proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I joined Peterson's Patriots myself, just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Want an engage? Want an engage? Want an engaging website? Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five star fiber talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to fiber.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. Welcome back to the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I'm your host, Austin Peterson. We appreciate you being a listener and follower of the Wake Up America Show. This is our second episode, and we're delighted to have you here. Uh, my guest, Judge Napolitano, just got done giving a rousing defense of the right to be left alone. And it was interesting to hear him talking about the concept of pro property rights versus natural rights as a concept in discussing the... Um, the different views that libertarians hold on where our rights come from. Uh, you're definitely not going to want to miss any interview that we do with Judge Andrew Napolitano, but of course, we always have an archive of the programs as well on the wakeupamericashow.com website. So if you missed a show, you can always just go to the website and go to the archives page. You can see the uh, inaugural show from yesterday, um, and it's uh, it's up posted at wakeupamericashow.com slash archives. You can check it out there. Um, joining us back in studio is Edie Vogel. Edie, thanks for sticking around. For, for, we appreciate well, you. I uh, just felt like 
that I had been in a theology 101 class with uh, with his uh, his honor, the judge. Yeah, it was a great a great interview. Uh, you know, he he comes from a very natural rights. Yes, uh, Thomas um, Aquinas. I'm a, I'm aware of his uh, background in regards to uh, his uh, his take on. Uh, Christianity and mm-hmm. Judeo-Christian values. Are, are you like him? Are you a pre-Vatican II Catholic? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's how each individual person sees their ability to worship at our service, mm-hmm. and as you call it, the pre-Vatican II. Um, as far as I'm concerned and how my feeling goes in regards to it, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the Mass, okay? And we Catholics believe that in a unbloody, unbloody sacrifice, that the priest acts in persona Christi, which means in the presence of Christ, and that he has the power to create on an altar— uh, the precious body and blood of Christ. It's a mystery. People do not understand it, but to me, it's a part of the beauty and dignity of our Roman Catholic faith. And I am a believer in um, the, 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 what as we call it, the Latin Mass, and I'm also a believer. I have to be a believer because the same thing takes place in an English Mass, okay? But I agree with uh, the judge, and unbeknown to a lot of folks, I think, that don't follow it like I do, the young people who are Catholic are flocking to Latin Masses. Yeah, I, you know what? You're right, and, and I've seen a lot more people, young people online, and they are converting. doing they are doing that because they are tired of the Hooten Annie effect of the way the council rules and regulations were interpreted incorrectly by the modernist in our faith. The judge would definitely agree with you. Oh, and I, I would love to have that discussion okay, with you. But, yeah, but, but that's the, but, but, but yes, I have I'm something, answering your question. Yes, but I have something to test your faith. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a clip of a pediatrician okay. talking about puberty blockers. You ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Oops. Puberty blockers are used once puberty has started, but not when you're too far along. And what they do is they just pause your puberty where it's at. And that gives you time to further explore your gender identity without the extra oh my pressure God. of Turn developing that off. in a gender in which you might not feel comfortable. What? And what's what's oh, up? Okay. I mean, they just pause. They just pause your puberty until you. Right, now listen. Is this person? You? I think I heard you say she is a licensed a pediatrician. Pediatrician. Yeah. Her her medical license should be revoked immediately. She is teaching, or she is talking just pure bull. She there, says I mean, they just, just pause puberty so you have more craziness. time to explore your gender identity. And there's no such a thing. That, I mean, uh, uh, give me a break. If there's if there's anything that has like dis- eroded the trust in doctors more than that's it than the pandemic itself. That's it has to be things like this. And it, and the judge emphasized that you know natural law, natural Judeo Christian values based on natural law given to us by somebody of a higher power versus some pediatrician that's telling you that you can take these drugs, these poor little kids who's, oh, go get me started. I'm going to get you started, Edie. I'm going to get you started because I've got more great clips for you. The project, uh, Veritas Project, yes, has talking an about that. awesome sting that they have done of an assistant principal at a school talking about their hiring practices when it comes to conservatives. What do you think that uh, their hiring practices are? Send me a text at 573-319-1586. That text line is open, 573-319-1586. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, one listener texted in, said, so good to hear and see Edie. Thanks. They're glad to have you here. Uh, another listener texted in at 573-319-1586, said, prominent Catholic commentator who advocates Latin mass.
pass is Michael Knowles. Also, mm-hmm. Matt Welsh, too. Can't forget about him. Yeah. You can text us your thoughts on the program this morning at 573-319-1586. We're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back with more Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients, and after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive, and if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I have fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. to be encouraged instead of punished, this is not our inheritance. If truth no longer matters, we will not remain free for long. This is our generation's challenge, to defend our founders' hope that we the people could self-govern if we defend our right to get the facts. And right now, we're building the only defense a free people have, the facts, on every politician, every position they held, every statement they've made, every vote they've made, and any cash they've taken. It's the real history on those now pandering for your vote. There are hundreds of young people building our defense right now, and they need your help. We all have our passions, but as our ancestors knew, when events become so foul they threaten us all, we must stand and defend each other. Please, have our backs. Join us at votesmart.org. happen if if I had to pick up the phone call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors what would I do if if no one was on the other end to respond what if there was no 911 so you can be a part of the solution anybody can be a firefighter male female younger older we are school teachers we are leaders in business is me you anyone that wants to be there is no typical firefighter As the world faces the challenges of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Lions recognize that kindness matters now more than ever. And Lions and Leos are finding ways to continue to serve our communities, including ordering food delivery for healthcare workers, holding story time for children online, and providing surgical masks to medical professionals and first responders. Empowering us to do more Lions Clubs International Foundation has provided nearly two and a half million dollars in grant funding for COVID-19 relief. And that support continues to grow. For more than 100 years, in times of need, Lions always find a way to help those around them. And after we emerge from this, we will be stronger than ever. Visit lionsclubs.org to learn more. Oh, I'm not 
Welcome back to the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I'm your host, Austin Peterson, joined in studio with Edie Vogel. Edie, thanks for sticking around. You're welcome. It's been a good show so far today, wouldn't you say? I would say so. It has. Your first time here I on the Wake Up America Show. I haven't been arrested yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can get away with a lot more here on uh, the internet than we could <laughs> on the radio. Uh, and I've got a clip for you. The Veritas Project is at it again with an assistant principal that they busted. Uh, this is a gentleman by the name of Todd Soper, he's a great K-4 through assistant principal in New York City, which you can imagine, well, what it's going to sound like. Well, let's play the clip. Okay. I'm the assistant principal. Yeah. What would you do, though, as a principal if you knew there was a conservative applying? Would you hire such a no. person? Uh, but like, for kindergarten, for Pride Month, it should be whoever you feel like you should be. The conversation's teething. So, so I, yeah. What would you do, though, as a principal if you knew there was a conservative applying would you hire such a no. person yeah we have like, very specific questions and like ultimately like our diversity equity and inclusion question like our dei question is yeah. like people don't answer the, that question right yeah. they're just an automatic not like what is so let's pause that, that for just a moment. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah, yeah. let's let's discuss. So he's, you know, if you if you're a conservative, then you know, are they going to hire you? No. So the, the, you know, that's right up there. Has mm -hmm. got to be that's got to be against the law. I mean, whether or not that's a, you know, that law is just or not, you know, that is definitely illegal. The statement made by the assistant principal of K through four in a New York City school mm -hmm. is. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. So, so that's one thing, but then here's the thing, and this is this, this diversity, equity, and inclusion statement, right? So based on how you answer that diversity, equity, and inclusion statement, you know, automatically qualifies you or disqualifies you. I have been seeing this, by the way, um, these, these statements that companies want you to fill out when you apply for them that and basically and my brother and i had talked about this on air before is it basically they're asking you to sub, to they're asking you whether or not you submit to the principles of the democratic party yeah. to get a job uh, uh, that's that's wild did you ever think that we'd be living in a time like that uh no but i think you're on to something there um my memory one time i was having a conversation with a a uh, classmate of mine one year below me, and uh, we were sitting in the, a car dealership waiting for our cars to be, um, I won't mention what city I was in, but uh, we were waiting for our cars to be repaired, and she wanted to be active in her community. And uh, one of the questions was for her as a volunteer to serve on a, on a, a committee in the city. And I won't name. Well, Ali, that's Columbia. Okay, yeah. And that I mean, question was put on her application. What you just talked about the diversity, the diversity, equity, equity and, and inclusion. And, yeah, yeah. And I thought, and and I thought, really? And I said, that's just bizarre. And and it's kind of the same thing for the uh, for academia as well. Because Justin, you know, he's a voice teacher, and he's been wanting to apply to colleges and, and teach, teach, teach at university. And, 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 yeah, and in, in order for him to be able to get a job at the university, you've got to sign a statement that essentially affirms that you believe in the principles of the Democratic Party. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Let, let's continue yeah. on. Play yeah. this clip. Continue. Is it self to be colorblind? Yeah. It's like, you know, like everyone is equal. Like those things that are well intentioned statements, but they're missing the depth of understanding. Yeah. It's like that person. Yeah. yeah. To there, maybe there's this one teacher who almost like refused to talk about Juneteenth a few years ago. And so if you're not willing to embrace fully, that aspect of our students and that means talking openly about race and talking about injustices in the world then i don't know if you're going to be able to like fully like fulfill your responsibility okay pause so you know they had a teacher who almost wouldn't talk about juneteenth and so that would be a disqualifier for them i mean you know you have to be able to talk openly about race why why? Why do? Why does the teacher need to be talking about race? Why is that so important for? Uh, it, shouldn't a teacher just be able to teach math? You know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yeah, just teach. You know, here's the thing: not everybody's qualified to teach to 
talk about race, Edie, because, you know, some people are ignorant and that that's okay. It's okay to be ignorant about race. Absolutely. It's okay to not know a damn thing about it. And if you don't, if you don't know a damn thing about it. Well, I think it traces back to the point here again, kindergarten to fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I don't think the child is in a developmental state of ability to understand uh, what this, what this, uh, what this assistant uh, uh, principal wants to try to uh, uh, drag out of a teacher that's applying for a job if they're going to go into the classroom and just want to talk about race, 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 race. I mean, if you're talking that's about it, American history in the amazing. context of like of, of slavery and the Civil War and, sure and race relations sure in the 1960s. Chapter, and I'm sure there's a chapter in every one of those sure. textbooks about that. Yeah, good but, point. But to, but to automatically start in uh, – a conversation with somebody who's just asking questions with some kind of an answer like that. That's just kind of nutty. Yeah, no, it is. But Pardon I mean, you know, me. that's where we're at. Let's, let's continue with this. Uh, this is the Veritas project that did a sting on a assistant principal at a K through fourth grade school, um, neighborhood charter schools in New York city department. Of What's her reasoning for being resistant? Each black lives matter. I don't think she thinks that the race is a big deal. Oh, so okay. she was just kind of like, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I love kids, so it's fine. I was like, well, no, like, you have to love all of them. But was she fired? Or? So she left. She would have probably been fired eventually, just yeah. based off of, like, mindset. But, yeah, but she left. We have always, and, like, we'll continue to, like, embrace diversity on all levels. Um, like, for kindergarten, for Pride Month, we got every, in first grade, like, every kid had, like, a mirror, and we talked about, like, there's, like, a read aloud about a boy that said he wanted to be a mermaid, and it's, like, a way to start, like, was, like, you should be whoever you feel like you should be, and, that, like, it's still, like, pause, so, like, pause, pause. Kindergarten. Did I hear that? He Pride month for kin kindergarten. Pride month for kindergarten. Well, and I didn't hear he say that the kid wants to be a mermaid. Yeah. Uh, Austin. Edie. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm not even I, uh, it's, it's it's the the thing that's the, that's so wild about this for someone like me, Edie, is that I'm not even socially conservative. Right? I I'm not Catholic. You know, I'm not I'm not a Christian, a Muslim or a Jew. Uh, I'm not a Buddhist, you know, I I I Yeah, I, but you've got a soul yeah, and you know that. Uh, okay, well, well I don't know that. But <laughs> but, but, but I'll tell you but I'll tell you this. Like it, it, this is absurdity. It's absurdity to introduce these kinds of sexual concepts in a to a kindergartner. I do, I cannot dis. I it's to a kindergartner. I I I oh man. I mean, you talk about indoctrination. It's happening, Edie. This is this is what's happening in our schools. All right, let's finish the clip real quick. All right, mm -hmm. <laughs> first thing, they're five and six. But I think we start with the. You, like the umbrella theme of like embrace who you are as kids get older and the idea of like gender becomes more salient um, yeah. which happens more towards like fourth grade the conversations deepen as well Ginger becomes yeah, yeah, yeah. Conversations deepen as the kid gets older. Okay. So they so they start them off in, you know, kindergarten talking to them about how to turn into a mermaid or some weird stuff. And then they move on to you know, when they get a little bit older, then they'll then they'll show them the, you know, the porn books with like the with the sex and all that kind of stuff that you see. Have you seen, by the way, some of the photographs of some of the periodicals that are being distributed in, in these <laughs> in these schools? No, no. Uh, no. Well, I'll tell you. You know, we're not on. We're not on. Ra you know. Well, now we're not on a radio anymore, so FCC okay. can't cut us off. But uh, I mean, like they're showing blowjobs. You know, okay, they're showing. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the, people want me to say uh, that. But the but now I'm understanding why the great state of Florida, under the great leadership of Rick DeS Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, yes. is had gone for this months ago mm -hmm. about this talking about this kind of stuff mm -hmm. in the classroom. Yeah. It's totally inappropriate. You can text the show this morning with your thoughts about this at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. One listener just texted in and said, we believe there is just one race. I believe if you weren't on the ark, then we wouldn't be here. Another listener texted in, said, I'm hoping that the Veritas sting will wake people up. 
about the importance of school board elections yes, from yes. Robbie Theremin. Good morning, Robbie. Thanks for texting us this morning. Uh, Andy Opperman this morning said, as always, please let Edie know I am tickled pink to have her back on the air with you. Edie, it is great to have you back on well, the thank air. thank you. Yeah, you, we've been having a great program this morning so far. So uh, we've got one more uh, segment to go and uh, one more commercial break, or actually two more commercial breaks to go. I hope you listen to all the commercials. Our sponsors have um, uh, generously invested in getting this program on its feet, as did Edie, who made a generous donation today as well. Coming up next on the program for the final segment, a liberal goes to a Trump rally God. to interview them, but the response was not what they expected. You're going to hear more about that from me and Edie Vogel when we get back at the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. Hello, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bush. This is my Didi's website, and I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bush is. But I've decided that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bush is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet. But it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Didi made Fringy bullshit to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Didi really likes it. Didi said it's really handy because us Fringies got thick necks. Need something really tough. People think Fringies are little, but if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm. Beefcake, yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes, you like that? Big brother, please focus! Frenchy Bullshit. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bullshit blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender hosts 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble only. We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Good morning. Time to rise in freedom. It's 849 and you're listening and watching the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson at wakeupamericashow.com. Joining us in studio for the final segment, sticking around, Edie. We're so grateful to have you, Edie Vogel. Thank nice you. to see you. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate you. It's been a it's good been show fun. today. Yes, yeah. we've had a good, good, good run. <laughs> yeah, we sure have. And we're definitely going to have you back on the show. You're definitely a fan favorite. You can text the show this morning at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. Make sure to program that into your phone so that way you can um, text us anytime you want. Just say maybe wake up with AP or whatever it is. Program us in there so you can text the show at any time. Um, Edie, I've got a clip to play for you here of a liberal who went viral for making friends 
friends at a Trump rally. Here he is on Fox News being interviewed by Steve Ducey uh, about the response. This is what he had to say. Um, it actually was much more friendly than I was expecting. We, I, I mean, as like growing up in LA, you think that these events are going to be like very aggressive. Um, and also I was kind of just saying that I was a liberal, but I was absolutely, uh, like, baffled that people wanted to talk and would actually be friends with me when I asked, want to be friends? And they said, yes. That's right. So ultimately, I think what you found is that it is easy to find common ground with people you do not agree with politically, right? Yeah, I think that's what like 100 New Friends and Jubilee uh, is about. That's the, the company I'm, I'm working with is we're just trying to find common ground um, between humans. Uh, and I think like at the end of the day, humans have a lot more common ground than we're led to believe. So, right? Yeah. Well, what do you think about that, oh, Edie? Yeah. I think that kid or man or whatever has become woke to the positive side. No kidding. Uh, well, I mean, you, what in the world does he think we humans are put here on earth to do? Well, you know, I mean, like, you know, Trump supporters and Republicans are so demonized every day in the oh, media Lord, that, mercy. that, you know, that know. they think that we're monsters. They think that people like us are, they, you know, here's the thing, Edie, they've been calling us Nazis I know. for, for years and they, they don't see the difference between a conservative, a libertarian, a Trump supporter, or anything like that. If you're not a leftist, you're a Nazi. So when you're growing up and people are saying things like that, like, and then you go to a rally and people are actually normal, you learn, hey, well, listen, you know, maybe these people aren't actually Nazis. They're not as bad as the mainstream media and people are saying they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you kind of wonder which one of the rallies he attended. If he's from Los Angeles, they don't. I don't think Trump's ever really spoken out there. Yeah, it doesn't say. It so says, he has to come to the come out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It he's, says. Yeah, Samuel okay. Donner was his name. He made friends at a Trump rally. It doesn't say where okay, he was okay. at, and that's beside the point. Yeah, but but um, I mean, we all know as we watched uh, the campaign of 2016 and the campaign of 2020, that there were thousands and thousands of people attending any rally that President Trump, atten you know, ran, okay? And, and they stood for hours to get there and hours to get out. I mean, it was just unbelievable in the history of campaigning for office that he had the following and he still has the following where joe biden can't get 60 people in a gymnasium in scranton pennsylvania to listen to him try to talk what he's talking about and the and the worst ex display of how bad we know he is was when he was in uh, pennsylvania in uh, philadelphia in independence hall uh with the with uh, my heart just about jumped out of my chest to see our United States Marine Corps, the guys standing guard. And, and he said, you know, was, is that the one where he called us semi-fascist? Yes, yes, yes. And said that all the Trump Trumpers are the leader of the revolution to destroy democracy. If I hear any one of those people one any more time talking about our government being a democracy, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it is a republic, a republic of that, the people, of the, by the people, people for, for the people, people that shall not perish That's from this right. earth. I mean, it's just crazy. They don't even know how to, what. what uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, the the optics of that speech were was pretty bad. were really it bad, bad, especially with the Marines standing yeah. behind him like that because well, they're not and, supposed to be used and for and political. It wasn't shortly, it wasn't. That's right. It wasn't shortly. A little bit later on, that uh, the pundits had to say, you know, then they played. They played Biden saying, you know, I will never use the military for optics on a in running. I think a lot of the networks didn't even show the speech no, no, because they on, were saying it was not on ABC or CBS. Yeah, or because NBC. yeah, because they were saying that it was too political absolutely before it that, was just you know, it was anti-american yeah yeah well you know it, oh. I, the thing that i liked about the liberal going to the to the rally yes. is that it, it it showed that we are all just people we're all americans and i don't i don't want to buy into too much of the divisive rhetoric because i would really like to see the united states stand united stand yeah, strong absolutely. you know because i i believe that we are stronger together and 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 we we will come through this. Agree. But it's going to be a rough ride. Mm -hmm. uh, midterms are going to be important. Yep. You know, don't sit at home and think because you don't think they might make that red wave. You, all you you patriots out there, you got to get out and vote. Amen. And and pay attention to where you're voting. Uh, pay attention to the uh, the. Remember machines. how much you've been paying for gas yeah. in the last couple I mean, of years. It's just. Uh, 
we'll see. Yep. We'll see if we can uh, get something out of this midterm yep. that resembles some kind of a fair election. Yep. We got to go now. Okay. Uh, Edie, yes. it's been great having you fun. on the program. So much fun. Yep. Thank you very much for coming on here. We'll definitely have you back next okay. week. Okay. Very yep. good. Thank you for Thank watching you. the Wake Up America show. We're going to go to a commercials for our, our last five minutes of the show. Just remember, all of the commercial sponsors for this program took a big risk on a program that had not even debuted yet when they invested their dollars to make this show happen. And also because of the support of viewers like you and, of course, people like Edie who made a generous donation today. If you'd like to advertise on this program, you can do so. Go to wakeupamericashow.com. You'll see a button that says advertising. If you'd like to become a monthly supporter and be entered into prize drawings, you can become a monthly supporter. Join us by donating seventeen seventy six a month to help us to spread the message of economic freedom and personal liberty. And do us a favor and visit one of our illustrious sponsors who you'll see right now. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on Wake Up America Show with Austin Peterson when we rise in freedom again. It's morning again in America. Our country is proud and stronger and better. I like shooting things, but whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work, but when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing, the Templar knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com.
I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets, and new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right.